nice pass down to the short corner by Wesley Matthews and Jarrell McNeil has absolutely no fear taking the ball to the basket. What a courageous driver. Tom Green said he shows up when the lights are bright. He likes center stage. And the save by James will give Marquette the ball. Novak uh, reduced to a cheerleader at the moment. You hear a lot about the extra pass, and Wesley Matthews could have taken that drive himself, but passed down along the baseline to somebody who had a better opportunity, and a nice heads-up play by Dominique James, throwing the ball off of Brandon Hollinger to get possession for the Golden Eagles. Alabama 29, Marquette 22, as we approach the eight-minute mark remaining here in the first half. Too aggressive of Felix. And he picks up the foul. Felix trying to beat there. So Alabama with a 29-22 lead as they approach eight minutes to play in the first half. Meanwhile, in Salt Lake City, Montana and Nevada are just under the seven-minute mark in the first half, and the Grizzlies lead it 25 to 18. Thank you for joining us on Singular at the half. Back to Jacksonville for the second half after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. Davidson. And James with a penetration, and it just wouldn't fall for him. He took a whack as he delivered the ball, no foul. The Lynx, he hasn't lost his touch. Five from outside, five for six, and 15 points for Jean Felix. Jean Felix averages only about eight points per game. But when you get him started early, he can fill it up. And clearly, he is feeling it today in San Diego. Almost doubling his average in just 13 minutes of the game. And when you get a shooter like John Felix that likes to catch and shoot, you've got to make him put the ball on the floor, turn him into a driver. Well, the pass is too strong from McNeil. Out of bounds to Alabama. The junior from uh, the Congo, Brazzaville, Felix. He's been the man for Alabama. Look at the game summary. Montana leads it by seven, shooting it well, 58%. Andrew Strait setting the tone with six points to open things up. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinaco, courtside here in Salt Lake City. Of the four matchups that we're doing here in Salt Lake, this was the toughest one to kind of figure out beforehand how these two teams would match up against one another. Yeah, it really is. But once you get a, you know above the four seed, I think it's up for grabs really. And now five and twelve. I think one of the things that Montana has done pretty nicely is they did exactly what Larry Kristoviak said yesterday. We're going to come out and just play a real methodical type game, establish ourselves. We share the ball a lot, and that's exactly what they've done so far. They've been patient at the offensive end. Now, Kristoviak added that it's been a little easier this year because of the NCAA tournament experience a year ago. There's more of a comfort level for his team. It was such a new experience last year. They turned it over on a foul call. Haskett, that's his second. And Kristoviak disagreeing with the Final call from Montana Leslie Jones. Jordan Haskett, his second personal. 14. Substitution, Charlo is back in. Demarche Johnson will sit for Nevada. Mark Fox, he was an assistant at Nevada under Trent Johnson, also an assistant at Kansas State and Washington, played at Eastern New Mexico. Coach of the year in the WAC this season. And Nevada beginning to look comfortable with Marcellus Kemp, who continues to lead this Wolfpack team in the first half. And keep in mind, the good teams figure out ways to get themselves untracked. And this is a team, Nevada, that's struggled a little bit in the first three or four minutes to find their rhythm at the offensive end. And then a guy like Kemp starts to take over and attack. Here's the curl by Criswell and a foul call. So Criswell will be shooting free throws. It will be Shiloh, his second personal foul. Criswell, a player who's very good from long range, and sometimes that allows you to bait defenders out. Kind of once you see them leaning, then it's a good time to attack, as we just saw Larry Kristoviak happy with the play of Criswell all season long. Criswell, fourth on Montana's all-time scoring list. He passed Montana assistant Wayne Tinkle earlier this season. 26-21, there's the coach. 
pretty good, good sized staff over there. Yeah. Both yeah. of those guys. Uh, Tinko and Christovia. Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> think anybody's messing with them. 27 <laughs> 21. Criswell now with six points, the all time three point shooter in school history for Montana. Under six minutes to go in this first half. Off the penetration, Sessions missed it. And loose ball, Fazekas. Counter. Well, good work on the offensive glass there by the Wolfpack. Fazekas in particular there had a little bit of traffic around him, but hit that ball before he went up. Martin can't hit the three. Fazekas gets it ahead. Good decision to get it out to Burleson, too. A freshman from Seattle, Washington. And Nevada coughs it up. Here's the run, the loop. Inside, Matthews. That's where they're willing to make the extra pass, Montana. And they go up and down the floor. Louis that time could have forced the action, but he waits it out. They come down. Their decisions have been very good here in the first 15 minutes or so. Now, their last win in the tournament came in 1975. So far, so good for Montana. Made the first to three. And by far the leader in scoring, 17 and a half points a game on the year, 20 points in Big East play. And you made an interesting point there in talking about the the zone earlier, Jay, and it's uh, just and you, you as a coach understand it that the average fan says, well, you have a great outside shooter. You don't want to zone him. He's going to be open. But sometimes the zone is even more effective than man. Well, you're not running your normal sets, and Marquette does run a lot of set plays, but you can get out to a shooter and Steve Novak if you have a good awareness for Novak you've got a, a great opportunity to get some late pressure on him and Alabama a very good team and very good defensively so they, they are used to playing this zone it's not unusual for them. You saw the officials uh, checking the monitors and uh, apparently to see whether or not the ball touched the rim whether there's a new yes it did they reset the shot clock at 35. Marquette shooting over 60% in this ball game, yet they find themselves down by 11. They have allowed some offensive rebound opportunities. They have allowed Jean Felix to get started from three. And they've been guilty of turnovers. And Alabama's taken advantage of those turnovers by scoring on the other end. It's been an efficient half for the Crimson Tide. Neal to Novak, and he draws a crowd. And a foul against Marquette. The push up, I believe, is on Jamil Lotz. No, it was uh, the other big man, Barrow, on the other side. And Usman Barrow has his first foul. And that's six now on Marquette. So Mama goes to the line from now on. Tom Green having to go big with his lineup. Now Steve Novak having to guard Felix. And he better get up on him and turn him into a driver. Yeah, Felix had a shot there, but uh, turned it down. And this one is blocked by McNeil, but a foul. And so that'll be a three-point attempt for Jean Felix. Second foul on McNeil. That's what knocking down some threes will do for you. Now Jean Felix has got great shot credibility. You've got to get out to him with a little more of a sense of urgency and a little too much urgency there by the freshman, Jarrell McNeil. And you just have to love that mentality of someone who thinks that they can really shoot the ball because Felix actually was down to 29% from three-point range, was not shooting well. He didn't know it. He came out firing. <laughs> Only averages eight points per game. Not a great shooter, but a streaky shooter. And right now, he is on a hot streak. Makes two of the three-point attempt. As Dan Fitzgerald is back in for Marquette, replacing Terrell McNeil. And when you've got a player with this kind of positive momentum, it's almost like as a coach, you don't want to go in for halftime. You want to say, can we just keep playing? We'll, we'll, we'd be willing to wave halftime. <laughs> Do you ever feel that way? <laughs> I did about my teammates, not about myself. Two for three from the line from Felix, and it's a 13-point lead for Alabama. On the baseline short, and here comes Steele and Bama. The tide on a roll here in San Diego. Hollinger's first shot of the game, not there. And 
Davidson gives Bama another second chance with the offensive rebound. They talk about long arms. James thought he had that ball, and then the long arm of Jamario Davidson just picked it out from over. Davidson says, okay, you think I'm going to drive? I can hit these two. And timeout called by Tom Crean. Can't believe it. 37-22, Alabama in charge with five minutes to play in the first half. Meanwhile, in Greensboro, almost 17 and a half to play in the second half. Tennessee with a 43-39 lead on Winthrop. Let's take you there live and join Kevin Harlan and Dan Bonner. Tennessee is led by six, and Winthrop is led by as many as three. A game that's contained five ties and four lead changes. Look at Bruce Pearl and his counterpart, Greg Marshall. We're in Greensboro, game one, Wichita State took care of Big East. Seton Hall, the winner of this game, will play the Shockers. Great, oh. tough basket inside by Otis Daniels, a senior from Greenwood, South Carolina. Greg Marshall out there on the court trying to double-team C.J. Watson. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. He was just calling out his defense. <laughs> now, what, ha what happens if the coach is out on the court and the guy runs into him? Wingate again inside. When he just does that, sticks with rebounding and just close point-blank range shots. He's, he's in good shape and tough to stop. As we have seen, however, when he starts dribbling the ball, he generally has some adventures out there. Big South Conference champion Winthrop. And the top team in the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference, Tennessee. Shula. That's a tough matchup for Bradshaw. against Wingate and snaps it outside. Gaynor with a three. And Winthrop is now knocked down six three-point shots. And Gaynor's got his second right there. And Gaynor just picked up a foul. Trying, that's his uh, first foul for Gaynor, trying to steal the ball from Watson. These Winthrop. On a setup for straight. Matthews pulls the trigger. And he connects a three. Well, he's just under 50% on the season, so he can really stroke it from down deep. But I like the decision by straight just then, not to try to do too much with the ball. They look down low, it closes, they get it back outside. Under three minutes to play in this first half. Here's Fazekas. Bank shot goes down for Nick Fazekas. Well, for a guy who averages about 22 points a game, you know he's going to keep shooting. You know he's going to get his opportunities and touches. And he'll probably end up making his share before the game is over. Ten points, eight rebounds, first half Fazekas. Tough angle for DeLuy of Montana. There's Kemp looking down low. Johnson trying to Boy. establish himself. Don't get a better look at Johnson. I wonder why he puts a frown on his face. He was wide open there for a count of three seconds. Now, Fazekas and Strait have been bumping bodies throughout this possession. Coming up on two minutes to go, first half. Turning the corner, and the layup goes for Marcellus Kemp. Well, Strait was supposed to either step in front or at least veer off the driver, and he kind of just was hung up with Fazekas that time and didn't do neither of the two. Kemp has already topped his season average. He's got 15 points, came in averaging 14 and a half. And a foul call. Burleson will pick it up. His first personal 15. 150 to play in this first half. Montana with a 36 to 29 lead on Mark Fox's team. Grizzlies got off to a good start and they have sustained it. There have been very few moments where Montana has looked overmatched or confused. These two teams are on the same plane. Yeah, and I think what they've done is they've put together a nice game plan here at the offensive end to get the ball to Strait, who has it right now. And that time, Fazeek is able to deny. Strait sticks with it. The hard-nosed play of Andrew Strait. You know what's starting to come into play right now? You look at Strait, about 250 pounds or so. Fazeek is at the other end that he's, they're kind of matching up 235, but his 235 does not look nearly as strong as Strait's 250. Outside, Kemp, bottom on a three. What a half for Kemp. They'll call it a long two-pointer. Yeah, his right foot slid up. 17 for Marcellus Kemp, the sophomore. 
And it's 38-31, under a minute to go now, first half. Criswell in a matchup with Burleson. And you know, it's funny, watch it straight. He looks like he's tired, but he really isn't. He just breathes hard, he catches his breath, and then he goes to work again. Here's Criswell, driving on Burleson, fend off, jumper doesn't go. Chavez, the rebound and a push. So the ball landed somehow in Chavez's hands with three white jerseys in the vicinity. Yeah, but neither team is at the bonus yet with 38.7 seconds left. That's why this half has been moving along pretty quickly. Six team fouls against Nevada. Yep, Montana with only four. Chad Bell will check in, and Mo Charlo will sit for the Wolfpack. Montana leads by seven. Shot clock, game clock, about a three and a half second differential. Yeah, keep in mind also, if Montana gives this ball up, they have a foul to give, more than a, a couple. Straight driving. Oh, baby. He goes in there with a purpose. And this is where they can use that foul to give concept right here. They have a couple to give, so if they could deep go into the basket, reach out, bump somebody, Kostoviak up off the bench, putting one finger up, and I think that's what he's indicating, one to give. Somebody's got a foul, though. Camp oh. to the goal with a finger roll. <laughs> Two guys tried to stop him with fouls and couldn't do it. And that's how this first half will end. Camp puts up 19 points for Nevada, but Montana with a 40 to 33 lead at the break. We'll send it to Greg Gumbel with Singular at the half. Coming up after these messages, this is the road to the Final Four on CBS. <laughs> Cox Arena, 12,000, all conveniently located around this court. And uh, Jean Felix, uh, apparently that hour and a half delay with the bomb scare that started our morning didn't bother him. Maybe he was off shooting threes in the parking lot because he came out really drilling uh, big numbers. Uh, he's a player that's been said that he has no conscience and today not a problem that he has no conscience he likes any shot he can get but everything he's got today he's drilled there's no back what a terrific shooter he is at 610 tough to defend and he'll shoot from anywhere that's a big leg three he's got three out of four today all our trays there's the steal solution Tipped again, and on the third chance, Bama gets another offensive board basket. Well, Alabama is just dominating the offensive glass. Those big bodies, they know they have an advantage, and they're taking advantage of it. But they come. is at halftime but we have three other games going on in this first round of the NCAA tournament we'll take you out to live action next CBS Sports presents singular at the half sponsored by singular raising the bar Welcome once again to our New York studios and singular at the half at the break. It's 40 to 33 Montana leading Nevada. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis in other games in Greensboro Winthrop and Tennessee are doing battle and they're battling well. 30. Let's see Winthrop and Tennessee. There it is 50 to 47. The volunteers in the lead coming up on 13 and a half minutes to play in the second half. Let's go there live. Kevin Harlan Dan Bonner. Regular season in the Big South Conference Championship. They are in again. Here's Martin with the long range three. And Patterson fought for it. And Howell has it. The two seed Tennessee volunteers have led by six. They try to get it inside to Wingate. They can't. And now charging Chris Gaynor. Into Crenshaw. What a pass and what a finish. Boy, once again, Tennessee having a tough time getting back on defense. Timeout. That, is, that is not a turnover. Bruce Pearl called the timeout before the ball was thrown in bounds, and I think Greg Marshall, if his head face gets any redder, his head's going to pop off. <laughs> we told you before he operates with a 10-year extension on his contract. He's brought this team to the big dance before. And the confidence they're showing today against the two seed Tennessee Volunteers has been something to see. 
Let's set up the play. Davidson. Felix, another three. Kind of shot put at that one. Didn't really get his feet set. He was almost surprised he was that wide open. Novak. And it's out of bounds to Marquette. Novak almost shot that ball as an afterthought. He's got to be more aggressive in looking for his shot. Tom Crean and his staff have been on Novak all year long not to pass up shots, to be more aggressive and not to worry about being selfish. When he's got an open shot, it is good for his team for him to take it. He joins Dan Fitzgerald on the bench. Fitzgerald picked up his third foul. Pass inside and a foul against Alabama. That'll put Marquette into the bonus. Foul is on Jean Felix, his second. Nine points on three threes. He's had to work really hard for everything he's got. Joe Chapman toes the line. Average six points a game on the season. Young guy in high school, worked as a janitor in the high school. That's really one of the great things in college basketball right now for a lot of these programs that have new practice facilities is all the kids can get in there whenever they want to go shoot, to work on their game, shoot free throws. And Chapman uh, deft on those two attempts. Alabama's lead uh, reduced to 12. Kept sticking with man to man. They started the game out in zone, and John Felix went crazy on the Golden Eagles from the perimeter. Steele working the baseline. That gives Davidson a 15 footer. Soft touch to Mario Davidson with 11. Oh, Alabama's done very little wrong, Jacobs. They have really shot the ball extremely well. They have rebounded well on the offensive end. They've limited Marquette. To one shot for the most part, they've turned him over, and better yet for Alabama, they have not gotten their big guys in any foul trouble at all, and that's vital. Tennessee leads it by one. The last play, a controversial play. There is Bruce Pearl right there, and in the NCAA, a coach may call timeout from the bench. He calls the timeout. The question that Greg Marshall had is, was the timeout called before the ball was thrown in bounds? Greg Marshall, as his as demonstrates right there, didn't think so. Dean Bradshaw is in, takes it coast to coast, and can't get it to go. The other Bradshaw, Greg, picks it up. And now Chris Gaynor. Felix with 17, Davidson with 11 to lead Bama, Novak with nine, the top scorer for Marquette. Steele. Hollinger. Steele has to force the shot at the buzzer. Well, the Alabama Crimson Tide is shocking Tom Crean's Marquette Golden Eagles, and the big man was Jean Felix, over twice his average on the season. Felix with great outside shooting gives Alabama a 44 to 30 lead at the intermission. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel in New York after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the men's NCAA basketball championship on CBS.